Now, just kind of speaking to some of the facets, the other thing that we wanted to hit on is the imagery side of it. And this is pretty powerful too. So here you are, you have this marketplace platform and you have people uploading stuff to your site, right? Uh, maybe it's coming in through an integration, EDI, um, CXML, or maybe people are just bulk uploading it or manually uploading content about their products. Well, how do you know uh, if a product image has already been uploaded? How do you know if the one that's already there is better than the new one somebody's trying to upload or vice versa? How do you then know if the product description is matching the image? How do you know if it's not a really bad image that should never be on your website? Uh, these are things that, you know, they cost you money as a marketplace administrator uh, if you don't have some form of, you know, um, forum and moderation that you're leveraging uh, within your community. And most marketplaces don't have like, you know, self, like their, their community moderating everything. Uh, they're going to be leveraging internal folks that are paid. And one of the best ways to leverage AI with imagery is to be able to sort of like decompose what's in the image. Does it match the text? Uh, vice versa, does the text match the image? Is this a good image or not? One of the things that I mentioned earlier was fine tuning. And this is such a key aspect for people to take away from the AI conversation is that you can take a model that's already been built, that's cost literally millions and millions to tens of millions of dollars to generate. Um, and you can then fine tune it for your business. So think about this for imagery, Ron. Someone has 10,000 products and they don't have images for any of them. They're all sitting in their ERP system and they don't have really good marketing content either. But we know that they have like 200 or 500 images and descriptions that are really good. So we take that data, we train the model with that. Maybe we even train it with some competitor sites. And then we basically have it learn this space that you're in. And then once it's learned that, and it's sort of like knows that that's where it needs to weight things heavily toward, uh, then it, it's not going to be perfect, but it will be able to bias toward your space and what you've trained it on. And that's called fine tuning a model. Okay. So now think of this for images. The mechanics of images are really interesting and I won't go into all the details. I'll just give a summary for everyone. The way that AI works is it's sort of like this massive amount of like throwing spaghetti against a wall. And like a great way to think about it is like you have people like standing and they're like standing against the wall and you tell the AI, like, I want you to tell me who it is and how many hairs they have on their head and like what position they're holding their hands in, their legs in, what their facial expression is. But all you can do is throw spaghetti against the wall. So AI literally does curve fitting is how the mechanics work with matrices. But just imagine throwing like really tiny little pieces of spaghetti against every single part of the wall and getting it getting feedback on everyone. Did that hit a person? Did that hit a person? Did that hit a person? What's the shape of it? And just getting it down to this multi-billion, multi-billion, multi-trillion um, variable levels of little pieces of spaghetti you throw. And eventually you get this high fidelity outline of what's going on with wherever you throw the spaghetti against the wall. And like that's basically what it's doing. It's just running this big, massive curve fitting on whatever data it's trained on. And what's crazy about that is I, I wouldn't necessarily call it intelligence, but it creates this like memory that it gets of whatever you train it on that's really, really um, insightful. Um, and it really represents the data typically quite well. Um, and so you can get it to sort of like reproduce content that you fine tune it on. Now take this to images. Well, with images, um, they, some of the researchers that came up with Diffusion tried this really interesting thing where they wanted to see if they could take images that they already knew looked a certain way. And they do what's called labeling. Uh, so you take an image that looks a certain way. Let's say this is a, a portrait of Ron Halverson looking awesome in a webinar, okay? And then they basically label that and state that's what it is. Um, and then they train it with the AI. And that's the input, is your perfect picture 
um, with a label on it. Well, then they tried adding noise to it and then telling the AI, like, these are all pictures of Ron. These are pictures of Chris. And they added noise to it until they could add like 80% of the picture was just noise. 90% was noise. And the AI with the right text input could go from the noise to a picture of Chris, from the noise and some text to a, a picture of Ron. So if you sort of go to the limit and you just have noise, well, basically what you can do is you can draw like a stick figure of whatever you want, give it to the AI, and it can denoise that and go from a basic image, think of like a noised image that it's been trained on over and over all these images that it's been trained on and gotten feedback like, yes, this is a picture of a house. It just had 90% noise on it. And you figured that out. This is a picture of a, um, a product of a certain type that matches your marketplace. This is an automobile. This is a diamond ring. This is a manufacturing, you know, automation tool. Um, and it's able to take the text with a stick figure picture. Again, that's represented by adding 90% noise to an image. It makes it effectively a stick figure and then denoising it. And this is called diffusion. And it's really cool because basically what the AI is doing is it's learning through literally all of these mass number of, um, you know, training models that it goes through how to take a stick figure and then denoise it into an amazing image. Well, now I'll take this and apply it practically to um, marketplace e-commerce. How many products have images that are not that great? What if you fine-tune this model that's really good at making images from basically nothing, um, and then you fine-tune it on images within your niche, and then teach it to make reasonably representative images? Um, that can be helpful and you would want to caveat things. You're not necessarily going to want to say like, this is an actual image of this product because it's not, but it can be helpful and instructive, especially for categories and things like that. The other thing that you can do is then you can read the image and see if the image matches the product and see if the quality level is of a certain level. So you can decompose the image and sort of understand like comparatively to high quality images. Is it good? Um, does it have content that shouldn't be there? Um, it's capable of seeing if, you know, the content is of a certain category um, by just understanding, like taking an image and turning it to text and then analyzing the text. And so this can be really, really powerful. Again, thinking about a marketplace and scaling, um, you're going to want to be able to present images that are smart and useful to the user. Uh, this can be done by fine tuning a diffusion model that can generate some useful images. Um, and you can note that they're placeholders, but it can at least be somewhat representative. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can make sure to audit images that people are uploading and make sure that you're picking automatically the best images for users to look at. Um, and this, you know, this can extend to other areas. Um, an example would be like, if a business wants to submit their profile and they take pictures of their facility, is it BS? Or is it a real facility that's credible? And, you know, you can do a lot with this. Like if they say they have a manufacturing facility or fulfillment capability, take pictures of it and upload it and let the automated tool sort of deliver, you know, a uh, probability that the image matches what they're saying they have. And this can just be really useful in automating certain aspects of your marketplace. So Again, you can kind of combine these together and deliver a powerful punch uh, for your users that's just way more dynamic than what you would otherwise have without it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of traction that you can get by fine-tuning these images. Uh, that would be one of the most powerful things. Um, but how do you do that? And how do you select a partner that's really good at these things? Um, well, I mean, I would say in general, they need to understand these concepts. They need to understand that you can fine tune your models. Uh, there is a lot, Ron, about licensing that's important to consider uh, with commercial use cases. Um, a lot of these open source libraries are explicitly you know, requesting or limiting access for commercial usage, um, and they don't want it used commercially. A lot of them just want to be compensated. Um, and so you want to work with a partner who not only understands how to execute on it, but also the licensing and legal implications 
um, you know, not legal advice, just these are things to be aware of as an educational perspective. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of different licenses out there, right? I mean, when somebody says GPU, what is that? Is that a graphics processor or is that the general license that they're talking about on some of these open source, right? So having a yeah. partner that can understand the legalese of the licenses and they can do that research and can talk through the different models, which model's better, the language model, the tabular data model? Um, how are we gonna use it? What are we trying to accomplish in the marketplace? So thanks, Chris. I know that was something I couldn't have done on my own. I really appreciate the insight you had on those three areas. So I think that'll close off this video and uh, we'll head on into the next topic. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye for now.